What's up guys, Max Maxers here, and today we will be doing front fork seals and an oil change on the 2003 Vulcan uh, 800. Um, basically the two kinds of forks, these are what I call conventional forks, means the shaft is on the top and the reservoir is at the bottom. So sports bikes have what are called inverted forks, which is basically a flip of this. This is the old school type of fork, um, they're usually not adjustable, but they are really easy to work on, uh, really easy to take apart. As you can see, uh, these caps are pretty shit um, there's some oil on the shaft and this thing dives into braking pretty good so we're going to address all of those things i'm a heavier guy i'm pushing like 260 270 pounds um, and so i like to use this um, this is screaming eagle performance uh harley fork oil um for whatever reason my local harley dealer sells it really really cheap it's like six bucks a quart and so i've been buying it there or six bucks a uh, bottle I've been buying it there. Um, you can use whatever you want. I like to use something heavier weight. Factory weight's like 10 weight. I think this is like 20 or 25 weight oil. Um, it basically helps balance out me being a bigger dude. Uh, we also need a new set of seals and uh, gaskets. These are our seals and these are our outside gaskets. I got those from All Balls Racing. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. It's usually 25, 30 bucks, something like that, um, for a set of gaskets. Uh, all you really need to do is get this set up in a way that you can get the front wheel um, off the ground. Um, there's any number of different ways to do that. Um, and uh, you can do it on the garage floor. Unfortunately, I have a lift, so we're going to use the lift. Um, but basically, the first step is to remove the forks. For that, you're going to have to loosen up here. You're going to have to loosen over here. Um, and you're gonna have to obviously remove the front wheel and remove this uh, front fender. Um, nothing super crazy about that. Pop the brake caliper off. Just need a ratchet and some sockets and you should be good to go. So the first step is to remove the caliper. You got two 12 millimeter bolts here and then there's a retainer here with an eight millimeter. Next step is to remove the front wheel. There's a 19 millimeter uh, nut on this side and an eight millimeter hex head right down here. And then you can just basically pull the axle out. Um, be careful, there's a set of spacers on either end of the super skinny wheel. Um, just make sure you remember which one goes where. Next step is to remove this front guard. There's four 12 millimeter uh, screws. Mine only had three, but you just zip them out. And now we're able to drop these forks out of the triple. I like to do this one side at a time, uh, just to keep track of everything. Um, so we're going to release this. This is a 6mm here and an 8mm here. So this 8mm doesn't need to come off. These bolts don't need to come out. You just need to loosen them. Then you basically slide the fork out and our fork is out. Now, the way a conventional fork works is um, there's this cap up here that has to get removed. There will be a lock ring in there and a lock ring in here. And then if I flip this over, well, you can do that without making a mess. If you look in there, you can see there's a hex head, um, and that is, there's a connection point in here, and that's how we remove this top part. Um, and I'll show you guys all this. I just want you to have an understanding of how this system works. Um, you're going to need somewhere to drain your oil into. Uh, this always seems to make a mess. And it's a lot easier if you have a, a hard mount vice like this and a rag to um, have somewhere to hold the fork while you're working on it. So let me get this in there and I'll show you guys how we keep going. So there's a plastic decorative cover. We just gotta pop that off. Just use a sharpened screwdriver. And if you look in here, there's a center dip. You're gonna have to apply pressure and inside there's a snap ring. Um, and as you apply pressure, this thing will lower down and expose the snap ring and then you just gotta push the snap ring out. Um, try to do it in a way that it doesn't shoot across the garage. So you basically saw what I was doing there. There's nothing really special. This isn't compressed in here. The vise is just helping stabilize it so it doesn't move around. And then we can oops, lay this stuff out here on a clean paper towel. So first comes the cap, then comes the snap ring, then comes the plunger. You want to make sure this O-ring is in good shape. This one is. Um, and then you have this guy. This is your preload spacer. Um, 
If you want more preload, you can replace this with a piece of PVC or a piece of steel that's a little bit longer, gives you more preload. We're just gonna go with a heavier fork oil. Um, and then down there is our spring, which we're gonna pull out, oops. On top of the spring, there's a washer, forgot about that. And then there's a spring, and the spring is covered in oil. Uh, not quite as covered in oil. Looks like somebody's replaced this with ATF. That's a very, because it's kind of reddish. That's a, a very common thing to do. I don't like it. I don't think ATF is more of a detergent uh, than a lubricant. And in my opinion, it's not heavy enough to be a good fork oil. Um, you know, and ATF's like seven or eight bucks a quart. You're not going to really save yourself that much money unless you just have a boatload of ATF laying around. So next thing we're going to do is just pour this out. Yeah, you can see that's ATF. And you can just cycle this a few times. There is not very much in there. Now, there isn't a ton of fork oil in forks, but there's usually more than this. Now in the bottom there's a six millimeter uh, screw. That's your retaining bolt, you gotta unscrew it. Um, it can be kinda tight, so just keep that in mind. And based on how tight this one was, it's probably original. Um, these are called drain screws. I think you can use them to drain the fluid out. You can see there's some schmoo, which is not great. Um, but now if we take this and go like that, you can see some more fluid is going to drain out. Um, now we're going to secure this bottom piece in the vise, or maybe we'll just do it like this. And now we should be able to see how much you do this kind of number. Oh, I guess we should pop. I guess the next thing we should do is we should pop this crusty, crusty gasket off. Set that aside. Now in here you can see the gasket's deteriorated quite a bit. There should be a snap ring. It might be a little, a little rusty, a little crusty as well. See right there, camera can capture that. There's a snap ring in here. That's got to come out next. Um, the one downside of this kit is it doesn't come with new snap rings. Some of the kits do, and I always try to replace these, especially if this looks something like that where it's. We're gonna clean that up a little bit. Uh, and now that snap rings out, we basically use this as a ram to pull out the old uh, old gasket. Boom. And just like that, everything's out. Now, in here, we don't need to do anything other than just clean it up. We've got some some brake clean because this one is particularly filthy because that seal was leaking. So we're just gonna clean up all the mating surfaces and let all that schmoo run out of there. We'll clean this side as well. So, see, oh shit, this bearing came out too. Um, it's fine. So this is our, our actual oil seal. Um, 
And this is our our bearing. So there's a one of those and one of those. And this is the rod that I was talking about that goes in the bottom. It's what that screw screws into. And this is basically uh, an adjustment. All right, this is basically your um, your piston. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean everything up. Okay, now that everything's clean, reassembly is basically the opposite of assembly. So first thing goes is this outer bushing, which apparently did not get cleaned. So you actually clean everything. There we go. So outer bushing drops down first, then this guy, then this guy, and it's very important that the oil seal part goes down. Um, there we go. It's a little tight. It's a little dry. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, so now you slip this all the way down in there like that. Let it pump out a few times because of all the So you want this to be straight. So this is what happens when you don't have the right tools. Um, I have that one which is for inverted forks. It's a two inch piece. This is an inch and a half. It's obviously too tight on here to use as a slide hammer. Um, I think you want inch and three quarter for this type of fork. But if you have inch and a half, do what I do, which is basically make a solid piece and then sledgehammer it down. And then now it's gonna be a pain in the butt to get this off. Okay, next is this crusty snap ring, which unlike the other snap ring is actually fairly easy to put in here. Watch me say that as I stab myself in the hand. All right, there we go, it's snapped all the way down. That's good. Next we can put on our new dust seal. Again, just gently slips over here. And we're gonna use our, this guy, to basically drive the dust seal in. This just basically keeps dust and water out of there, which is good. Now we wanna make sure the spring is completely compressed and reinstall it in this orientation so that we can reinstall the screw. Um, No reason to go hog wild on it, just nice and tight. Now, we can flip this back over into this orientation. And start filling up with uh, fluid. Now, for this, I always trust the factory manual. Um, blah, blah, blah. Tells you, oh, see fork oil change. Um, here's the fluid. Um, the front fork, oil level, fully compressed without spring, which is where we're at, is 292 uh, millimeters, which is 29 centimeters, which should be approximately 290 milliliters, which uh, mm, oh, about two-thirds of this bottle, 473. So the way that I normally do this is it's, it's 29 uh, mil, uh, I'm sorry, 29 centimeters from the top. And so traditionally the easiest way of doing this is to grab a piece of welding rod or a coat hanger or whatever you want. Bend the end like that. Take a ruler, ideally one that has metric. And this goes to 30 millimeters. Perfect. So we're going to do uh, what does this say? 29, 292 milliliters. So 29 centimeters. So basically from there, we want 29 
centimeters basically do right there so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna cut it where we want and now we can see down there that's 29 millimeters um, and so now we can start to fill it with fork oil and true to form this took about 340 milliliters we were at about 400 we're now at about 50 um, the other thing that's super important is you want to fill it up most of the way and then pump it you're gonna bleed a whole bunch of air uh, out of it and so that's pretty much it at this point we can drop in our fork fully extend the tubes after the fork goes the washer after the washer goes this little tube um, and after the tube goes this guy and this is always a huge pain in the dick both to install and remove because you got to be super careful to not damage anything but also get this all the way seated and now the last piece of the puzzle is to pop our little chromey piece in and stick this thing back into the bike the other side of the fork, the other fork goes exactly the same way i'm not going to film it because it takes way longer if you film it um so we'll cut back to final assembly on the bike and just like that it's all back together um one thing to keep in mind, basically you want this, this trim cap to basically just poke through. You can see, you can just see the edge of it. Uh, for those of you who have bad memories, put the fender on first. Then goes the wheel. Make sure to re-grease your axle, 19 millimeter nut. Put down the set screw. Um, after that, you reattach the brake. There was an 8 millimeter screw back here and these two brake bolts. And that's it. Our front forks are rebuilt. Uh, nice and clean and ready for... Quite a long time of service. Normally on a conventional fork like this, I would say 20,000 miles, 30,000 miles is good for fluid and um, the gaskets every 50,000 miles or something like that. I don't know. It just, it depends on your conditions, depends on how you ride. Uh, but basically for me, this is the one and only time we'll be doing uh, fork seals on this bike. Now I do have a few more things I have to do. Um, they're little things so they're probably not gonna go on camera. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, hit subscribe. Check out our other video on this bike. Check out our videos on the Adventure Trailer, the Blazer, and the Crown Line. Uh, as always, I love you guys. Peace.